One month from today, the entire Wells estate will be sold at public auction. Before this can happen, the entire Wells estate must be carefully cataloged against existing records. Mother Superior and I thought it would be a fitting gesture on behalf of the college if you as a group would spend four days cataloging Tyler Wells' lifetime collection of art. Just so happens that after the award ceremonies last semester, Mr. Wells extended an invitation for all of you to spend a weekend at his estate. <laughs> Lucas, that is Jeff, and you're listening to Make Your Own Damn Podcast. Jeff, what's going on this week? Oh, man, not too much, not too much. I though did get the greatest tip ever in service history. Um, service history. Uh, I don't know if I can properly advertise it under Spotify's rules, but oh, yeah. I, I, I think I can. I'm not encouraging anything, and it is decriminalized where I am. I got tipped um, by a very happy cat owner. THC candies, shroom chocolate, and MDMA candy. So that oh, is, I, I don't know anyone in the service industry that has ever gotten a tip quite like that before. So no. that I'm just going to have, like, if you're curious, you can go on, like, anyone listening, seek out my uh, Facebook or Instagram. I took pictures of the packaging they came in. It's amazing. It's actually like the candy that your uh, c- uh, conservative church going aunt was worried about about like yes <laughs> it looks like it looks like real candy yes um, that's what's going on with me i'm not i didn't take any of those things yet i'm saving them for some special times coming up but uh that's what i'm up to and we are also but it has nothing to do with anything we're talking about today i was i is, was i was low-key hoping that you would have like taken something before just Oh, just, no, no. I mean, I just, I just got my normal beers. I was smoking like a joint about like an hour ago. So, so okay. it's just, it's just normal Jeff right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but we're here to talk about the 1986 supernatural slasher, kind of girls school screamers. Oh, okay. And let's just address it right from the beginning. I hate the title of this movie. I. It's, you know, some some things are hard to say five times fast. Some things are hard to say once. This title is so <laughs> difficult to say for me. And I, girls' school, like, it's fine. But yeah, then the girls' school screamers. I keep thinking it should be, like, ghoul school screamers, which is also hard to say. It um, is. Like, it was originally titled The Portrait, which we're going to get into The Portrait later. Uh, the portrait in question, and I, I guess it's a better title than the portrait, but yeah. it's still like really poor alliteration and an awkward title to say. And the it, the the S before the S, like the the S at the end of girls and the the S for school together. Yes, is what and, makes it really hard for and me. And then we have immediately followed up by another word that begins and ends with S. It's just yeah. It's just very awkward. And I uh, watched a couple interesting what people generally thought about this movie. I watched a couple like YouTube videos of some people commenting on it. And nobody can say the name of this movie without sa- sounding awkward. Like everyone just constantly stumbles over themselves trying to say the name of this movie. That, <laughs> that yeah, it's probably better than the portrait. But I think Choma kind of failed here on a good title. This is now Surf Nazis Must Die. This is now An Employee Barbarian in Dinosaur Hell. Right, right. Um, and yeah, it's definitely a trauma title. Like it's, um, I mean, it, it, yeah, it was it was originally called The Portrait uh, during production, but then when Trauma got the distribution rights, they changed it to Girls School Screamers, which... Yeah. Man, even you just said it right now, and I'm like, did he say that right? That doesn't sound right. And <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. it, it's all right let's move off let's move on from the awful title yeah for real for real so what's, what's this movie about <laughs> okay yeah here let me pull up um 
I'm going to read the description from uh, Vinegar Syndrome's website that they uh, last year did a complete remaster uh, of this movie and released it on Blu-ray. It's one of their uh, releases that they pseudo did in conjunction with Troma, which also includes yeah. movies like The Children, Luthor the Geek, Night Beast, um, and there's a couple others I know that they did. But Vinegar Syndrome and Troma kind of work together on a bunch it's... of the back catalog. Okay. And so um, here, here's what Vinegar Syndrome's website has to, has to say. At an exclusive all-girls college, a group of chronically misbehaving students are quote unquote rewarded for their bad behavior by being assigned with the task of cleaning a magnificent old mansion with a deadly past in preparation for its grand reopening by the school. But when the girls discover and use a dusty old Ouija board, they accidentally revive a terrifying spirit which begins dispatching them by cleaver, hook, car, and more. Can they put an end to the carnage before none are left alive? Yeah, I did. Are most of those plot points wrong? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, the, uh, well, a lot of it's right, but, I, but the one glaring uh, error for me is that uh, it's not really, a, well, it's definitely not a dusty old Ouija board. It's, they kind of just, <laughs> it's not it's not it's not what you think it's, it's not it's, a ouija well, board it's it's not a ouija board also they don't in the traditional the, sense they also don't summon the spirit the spirit's already there right right and um they're not misbehaving students they are legitimately being rewarded they have the best grades in the school yeah yeah they do um now but it is established that they are bad kids they you like know they bad kids they're like teenage girls I, that run around and giggle like. no i mean i'm saying bad like you know they, they're like getting in trouble you know and but yeah no it, it the way the principal worded it though is they said they're being rewarded for um for their grades which yeah. you know yeah they yeah, yeah. said that they're the top seven um students and they need assistance to catalog all the art at this building that's closing down it's not getting reopened by the school it's getting closed down because right right because they're they're trying to sell because it's they're, they they're trying to i guess get rid of the yeah yeah the estate um which uh man like all those little details in that description are wrong like that's not yeah. it's vaguely okay whoever watched this I'm sorry. Whoever wrote this really wasn't paying attention when they to the movie when they watched it. Like, you might be right. You might be right. This may have been on the background, and they've been like some poor intern. It's like, quick, we got ten minutes. We need a uh, write up now. Now, go, go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was that movie about? <laughs> <laughs> um, man. Uh, so I want to talk about the fucking furniture in this house, man. Okay, so this was all a real house. This was all a real yeah. house. This was all a real person's house. I don't know the uh, who the person was, but it was all a real person's house that they got permission to shoot in. And all those like things on the walls, all those objects are all real. Yeah, like, and that's I know. Really I know. Had no, home. look, like what's crazy is like I don't, I don't know if furniture like that exists anymore, but. That definitely is what furniture used to look like. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, like my gra grandparents' house was full of stuff like this. Um, just super, I don't know, just big and antique looking. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and it doesn't uh, look like you could ever actually make yourself comfortable anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um but I mean, this this type of stuff is in every shot of this movie. Um, and they now, managed you... to do the whole movie with only accidentally damaging one painting. Oh wow! Well, well bravo, bravo. Um, I, I wouldn't. I do you want to note though? No effect shots were done in the house itself, and we'll get to that later. I believe that. Um, do you have a history with this movie at all? 
Oh, really? No. This is just one of those movies that um, I, I was, like, vaguely aware of it existing, that whenever I, like, go through the trauma catalog, this was definitely a movie that would always you could always just see it around with trauma and that. And right. I never bothered with it because I just looked at the cover of it and looked at its name. I'm like, and eh, that looks like just some sort of like generic shitty slasher. And I'm a really not a slasher fan. Yeah. And, I was... and now I've seen the movie. So I finally saw it for the first time. I don't even know if I ever saw a trailer for it before. And I don't think I was missing out on anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I was I was kind of wondering where you would fall on this movie because I know that one of your least favorite genres is the slasher genre, but for, for horror, for like the horror yeah. sub, horror subgenres, horror. my least favorite is yeah, easily slasher. But I also know that haunted houses are one of your yeah. But this doesn't really do haunted house. I mean, it kind of does. And, and essentially, once the opening scene has it goes, I don't know. It never goes like haunted housey in my mind in any right. way. I mean, like, it's. I guess to there be is fair, a beachy the, scene. I guess there's a couple of haunted house trope things. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like the way we're describing it, if it sounds like this movie is a collection of a lot of horror tropes. Yeah, yeah, you are you are hearing correctly. Like, there's oh, yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of different tropes. Like I mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier. Like, ooh, I don't think I mentioned it on recording, but I will. Like, this is like a um, this is definitely like in the Evil Dead ripoff kind of category. Um, okay, so you said that yeah before we started recording, you said that, and I didn't say anything then because I wanted it to be on recording. Explain yourself with that. <laughs> um it was just like kind of the the haunted vibe and like I, some of the effects um i don't know just had a vibe for me like it wasn't it wasn't funny like evil dead um it actually reminded me more of rabid grannies in a way i could i could see see that at least like in terms of movies we've covered on this show uh rabid grannies is probably the closest com- comparison, the rabid grannies in the uh, the gore cut, whichever I can't remember which cut now is the gore cut. Producers cut. Yeah. Producers cut. Was that was that what it was? Okay. Believe um, so. Yeah. The producers cut of rabid grannies is way 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 gorier than girls school screamers ever even sure. gets close to. Okay. Like, I want to make it clear, like right off the bat, like. Because we're going to talk about violence and effects at the point that this is not a violent movie. This is not no. a gory no, movie. No, no. I could I couldn't even really say this is a bloody movie. Um, like it's no. it's it's a. I was kind of surprised, and this was a strike against it. Once it finally got to the um, actual like slasher s- segments, like how how mild and tame this movie is. Yeah. Yeah, um, which is weird because that opening shot is pretty gnarly. So every scene of gore, literally every scene of blood was added into the movie after Troma acquired the rights to it, uh. in which which um, 28 seconds to be exact got added into the movie. And if you pay attention, none of the gore shots any of the violent shots have anything identifiable from the house in the background of the shots. Mm-hmm. Also, it doesn't have anything identifiable of any of the actors or actresses except for one. They had one of the girls come back. They only paid one come back to do a a take of a death scene. But right. all the blood, all the blood was added into the movie um under the direction specifically of Lee Kaufman and Michael Hertz. Interesting. Yeah, I um and they oh, oh and that was also all done in uh I believe it was all done in New York. Um at, okay. ma- maybe even at like s- like some trauma locations or shit like that. But it was um so the movie was shot uh actually I'm not exactly sure when the movie was shot, but 
if you'll notice at the end of the credits, it actually has a copyright of 1984. So the movie was done in 1984. Troma acquired the rights and it didn't actually get its real first opening until 1986. So there was a you know year and a half, two year gap, depending upon what where these deals fell in a year with the film being acquired. Uh, the violent scenes being edited into the movie and then the film actually having its first proper release. So the first time I saw this movie was 10 years ago. And oh, you've it, seen this before. I had seen it before. I had seen it in a, in a theater. I saw it in, as a double bill uh, with this and um, uh, Blades because oh, yeah, the, some of the people who are involved yeah. in this were involved in Blades. Um, and the director was in attendance, uh, John P. Finnegan. And, and, and Where was this what, at? It was in Philadelphia. It was at this cool space called the Philomoca. It's like a... Uh, it's this, movie, still open. this movie was shot in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's yeah, that's kind of part of the story. It's like it was... Um, uh, it was like the Cinadelphia Film Festival was, was being held there that year. And so they were just showing all these like you know mostly like genre movies that were that were shot in and around philly and um uh yeah so the director and one of the other guys i don't remember i know i know john p finnegan was in attendance but but i don't remember who else um it was one other guy um but I, all i remember from the q a at the end of the movie it was it was just it was just great like it's just i mean at least for me it was like they're just like like, how did this come to be? It was literally just like, we were film students, we had access to equipment, and we wanted to make a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that was one of the things I kind of saw this, like, everybody, I found in my research, like, everybody involved in this movie was, like, a film student. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, fuck, the, uh, do you remember that, like, the nun character... Uh, not the old nun that's with the house, but like the teacher nun. Oh yeah, that person was actually. I think they may have been. They may have been the owner of the house, or they owned something that they let them use, and in return, they got to. They let her dress up as a nun and be in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and cool. obviously, that older lady um, is not a. Uh, I shouldn't say obviously, but she seems rather old for a film student, but she still only has a credit for this movie. You know, I found that the credits for this movie, not a lot of people went on to do it a lot, except it, I did yeah. find one weird thing, which we'll get to later. Um, yeah. Some of the things I was just like, huh, how about that? Yeah, it definitely um, has a vibe of like, uh, like a student film, but like in the sense that these students had access to like really good equipment. It's like, I mean, regardless of your feelings of this about this movie, like I, it's it's a gorgeously shot film. Like and and like like every shot is framed nicely and the colors just really like pop on the. It, uh, it was actually shot on thirty five millimeter, which yeah. Uh, was very expensive and they had very limited access to. So almost the entire movie was done on like the first recorded takes. Obviously they did rehearsals, but like, right. And of that, you can see boom mics occasionally entering into the screen. Yeah. 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 I did not <laughs> notice that, but uh, it, yeah, that's interesting. I, um, I was actually going to ask, is the version, do you know if the version on trauma now is the vinegar syndrome restoration? Um, it does not have the uh, it does not have the vinegar syndrome like company logo, but I cross checked actually the vinegar syndrome uh, version. So this might be a heads up for vinegar syndrome is on YouTube. Don't know if it's meant to be or not, but you can watch this oh, movie, wow. the new restoration on YouTube for free. That was actually how I watched this. And it ends with vinegar syndrome's logo. And I double checked. It's not on their company's uh account so i'm not sure about the legal status of that vinegar syndrome you might, might want to be aware of that but i double checked it with the version on troma now and um it's identical it's the yeah. vinegar syndrome transfer on troma now and i'm guessing it's part of the deal uh with doing these um these remasters of these old troma back catalog movies right. i bet you part of the deal is like we get to stream your remaster 
Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So I also see they have Blades as Vinegar Syndrome Blades. also did. And Vinegar Syndrome also did uh, Death by Temptation, too, didn't they? Oh, um, oh, I don't have the Blu-ray of that. I think you, you're you probably right. It probably was Vinegar Syndrome, but let me check on that. Um, But yeah, they've been doing... I, I've... I really like the vinegar syndrome exists. Um, I do too. I do too. They I don't are, think uh, I really yep, doing they did, God's work. They did Death by Temptation as well. I don't really want a full library of their titles, but I am really happy that they exist and some of their stuff they put out. I am really happy I have. Yeah, uh, them Severin and Arrow are just wonderful, wonderful organizations. And did they do the Flush for Frankenstein? Um. Oh, I. Th- uh, I think they did. Yeah, I think. Yep, that right. was um, that was that. Yeah. So we have covered, we've done several episodes on movies that they currently have the Blu-rays out for. Nice. Well, one of these days we should do an episode on Raw Force because that is a that is a doozy of a movie. <laughs> Can uh, they put it out? <laughs> Vegas, Vegas Interim, you should sponsor us. No <laughs> sponsors. We will yeah, sell no. out very very easy. <laughs> okay, uh, so where where are we at with talking about where are we at with talking about this movie? Uh, if it sounds like we're rambling a lot, it's because there's really not a lot to this movie. Um, it's it's okay. So so the let me just like sum up the plot line because that yeah. description we read earlier was wildly like off the mark. Like the, all the details <laughs> are wrong, but the big picture was right. That was kind of spectacular in a weird way. Right. Um. But this house, they, these seven uh, girls, I think they're all, all seniors in high school. I think they're about to like to go to college, just like the yeah. time frame. And so their their school project that they're gonna uh, inventory all the artwork in this house because the house is being sold and they need the inventory of everything in the house. And so they're spending four days there and. They don't find an Ouija board. They find is a diary, in right. which describes that the benefactor that the whole person, this whole school is involved with, uh, Sudo held his niece hostage and mm-hmm. attempted to force her into an incestuous relationship, and yeah. and she, he did he kill her or did she commit suicide? I forget that part. Um. Let's see. I, I, I it, yeah, I don't. Ooh, did the cause of death even get like? I think I think it he just does it's just her. mentioned that on the um on the Wikipedia it just says that she was killed in the mansion in an accident. And yeah, and that's brought up early. That's brought up in the movie when they're doing yeah. the research. I. I don't know if I don't recall. Like I don't. I really don't recall them like if, bringing up the actual cause of death. Like, I, like if it or, did, or, or it if was, they did, then it was just. It was it, probably at uh, the end during dialogue with the possession sequence, which we'll get to. Oh right. Um, right. And I just like wasn't paying that close of attention at that point. And, like missed that. Like oh, they just confirmed what happened. But regardless, um, there is so there's this dark history, um. And the movie also has a one-off, o- one-off opener of a little kid breaking in the house and getting scared by a female ghost. Um, yes. Then girls have like their little seance, which their seance involves putting all the p- pieces of paper with all the letters of the alphabet in a circle. In a circle, and then and they're using like they they're not using like a traditional planchette either. They're it's like. Uh... I don't, I don't know like, how to explain I, it. I, I, what they were doing, I've actually seen reference to in like older spirit board type of stuff. Like the idea gotcha. that like you don't need a quote unquote Ouija board. That Make actually, your own damn Ouija board. Yes, actually, that that actually is the older school version of it. Ouija board is actually a creation of a board game company. To right. And it's like right. a specific brand thing to popularize, like the, to to make money off the popularization of like spirit boards, which was a thing in like sure. 1930s America, to like 1960s. Like they, this was totally a pop culture fad of doing seances yeah. and shit. 
Was it Parker uh, Brothers or Milton Bradley? I, I truly know. don't call. I don't recall um, which one of them created it. But uh, spooky things happen, and then people begin to like disappear one by one, and then they get murdered, and then everyone mm-hmm. ends up dead except for the chick. And it's revealed that she looks like, oh, we got to get to that reveal. But let me just finish this plot summary, and then I got to focus on that painting, the portrait. Um, it, the chick, one of the girls, uh, looks exactly like the girl who was murdered many years before. And it's what the, uh, like, satanic spirit of the old uncle is, like, who's doing all the murders. Yes. yes. And, then, and then the spirit of the murdered chick from decades before kills the spirit of the uncle how do you kill a spirit i guess you get another spirit to do it it works he gets his spirit eyes gouged out don't think too much about it. just go with it yeah. and and you um, gotta and the movie ends but it's like there's that one girl who survived and her boyfriend's dead and like all of her classmates are dead and like everyone's dead and she's just there with all the corpses. Yeah. That's not implied in the movie at all, but I'm like, I think she's going to go to jail for mass murder. Like I don't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't me. It was the ancestral ghosts that killed everybody. Yeah. Oh my God. Like she would have her fingerprints all over everything. She's like, damn. Yeah. The old the old nun survives, doesn't she? She does. She does. Yeah, because yeah. she's the one who she's the one who summons the. the okay, spirit. so, so she, she does have somebody to back up her story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now so that's the basic plot line. That's basically what happens in this movie. I think it's a pretty generic plot line. That whole ancestral spirit. Um. Uh. It no, is. Having like like isn't that like also like the plot line of the original like Universal the Mummy. Ooh, of like uh, supernatural, com- the supernatural evil force coming back for the reincarnation of the hot chick that they never got over. <laughs> like I feel like I've seen that in a bunch of movies. Oh yeah, that that that's a I think that's a well worn trope. I'm pretty sure like there's even a Dracula. And that, a and that is Dracula the that is the that. plot of the original The Mummy. That is what the original The yeah. Mummy is about. Yeah. Um. So when they do the big reveal that this one current day chick looks like this chick from the past some decades before it's with the portraits what the movie is named after and there there's this covered painting this massive covered painting <laughs> and they we they pull like one of the characters uh it, it's framed in such a way that you can't see what's what's on the painting when they pull off the cloth uh one of the characters does it and isn't facing the painting and the one character that is um that is gasp and jump back and the character that's holding the sheet that was covered in painting slowly turns looks and gasps and then there's a hard camera cut to the painting and it says it looks just like you and i immediately burst out laughing because i'm like that doesn't look like anybody that's a really shitty <laughs> painting that doesn't look like anybody what do you what do you mean like you got the hot you 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 went to a fucking art school your film school like there has got to be somebody that could do a more accurate representation of that woman like oh man you, you'd be surprised it was a man. really amateurish painting i'm like i don't think that painting was part of the collection that they were like that was in the house to be given no i'm sure that yeah 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 like the, um, the movie makers brought that in because i was like oh that 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 just made me laugh i'm like oh and at that moment i'm like oh dear this movie i don't think is going to be for me <laughs> I don't know. I I like movies like this. They're like they're. I I actually find them weirdly uh weirdly comforting. Um, uh, just something about them, even though it's like horror and and it's like yeah, people are getting killed. There's just a certain like um. I don't know, like mood to the to these to these sorts of films that just uh, I don't know. I just like watching them. <laughs> and uh, like. All the, I mean, the, the, it's funny how there's a sleaze aspect to this movie, but this movie never actually gets properly sleazy. No, but, no, no, no. That there's, it's, it stars seven young college girls, and there's right. no nudity in this movie. 
1986 exploitation trauma release movie, zero nudity. Yeah, yeah, which is... There's almost no gore and violence in this movie. Yeah. It's weird. It's a weird one. It's almost... I mean, it's it's not quite something you would want to show a kid, but... Oh, I, I I would say this movie would be perfectly appropriate for a child to watch. They're just going to be really fucking bored by the time anything that may be objectionable happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, no. I, I, just, I, I, there's no way I'd see, like, a fucking 14-year-old watching this movie now or a 10-year-old. Like, like they would never no. make it through this movie. No. It's too boring. Yeah. Well, I'm... Yeah. It does have a lot of really cool, like images like i mean i i do really really like that prologue sequence like with the um the the kid who goes into the house after he gets which, there too and which was added i believe afterwards trauma yeah by yeah. trauma yeah um yeah i i really like that with the reveal it's it's so classical like almost like a like a EC Comics kind of moment. Oh, oh yeah, that's why that's that's why I know that that was that was no part of that was in the original because of that reveal of the rotting face, which is what yeah. adorns all the marketing for this movie, and that was specifically added into the movie by Troma so they could have a cool, crazy thing to put on all the posters. Yeah, and that sounds. The marketing sounds for this movie is way way better than this movie deserves like looking at the original trauma poster that's on wikipedia it's phenomenal it is an amazing slasher movie poster uh the recent vinegar syndrome release of it has this embossed slipcase on it that looks just phenomenal it's Mm -hmm. like this movie gets way way better presentation than has any right to (laughs) i mean like it's 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 presentation is fucking slick yeah. It says it looks great. Everything for looks about this movie are good. Oh, actually, I don't think the um, the uh, the special effects look any good at all. Yeah. 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 They're 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 real cheap. Um. The first that the first murder that we actually see with the cleaver to the face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was that was I was like oh that's it's 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 done half in darkness. That way they can hide that they're not at the house. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh. It's interesting, like, because it's funny because, like, with a lot of, I don't know, like, with with a lot of, har- I, I remember, like, always reading interviews with horror creators where they're like, oh, the studio made out all this gore, but, like, with trauma, they're like, you know, we like your movie. We'd love to distribute it, but there's no gore in it, so we we need you to like film some gore scenes. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I can see how that they got this was actually shot on film, and so here they have like a low budget movie that's actually shot on film that does look professional. It looks very very professional, and it's, and it's like, I'm sure immediately they're like, we can do something with us if you right. let us put our spin on it like Mm -hmm. we can do Mm -hmm. we can do something with this we can get you an audience and like i i I understand i that's i remember that from my deadline press days of sure some some authors being like i dig what you're doing i can get you an audience but you're gonna have to go further for me to be able to actually sell it to my to the audience I, i have access to totally totally um, I'm. Tr- I, I wish I remembered if I don't. I don't remember if I don't. I don't think anybody asked um at the Q and A any trauma questions, and I don't think they talked about uh, what it was like, you know, working with trauma. Um, I'd be super curious because they had direct work with them, like they did yeah. reshoots supervised by trauma, which that's that's one thing I found very really interesting over the course of this show is there's a there's like the dividing line between trauma studio movies and movies distributed by trauma and we've kind of right. learned that that line 
is a lot murkier, murkier, a lot more murky. <laughs> I couldn't get out the other the other version. Of it. A lot more murky, murky than uh, even Truma themselves plays it up to be. Right, right. Like, like we've um, we've come across a lot of movies that Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Hertz had direct hands in altering specific things with them that. Like the whole intro and um and a lot of the dialogue in Nympho Barbarian. Um, yeah, and they and, just kind of uh, play it off as like, oh no, this is completely the creation of somebody else. Yeah. Um. Now I don't know. I don't. I can't. I don't recall if they did anything like creatively, but I I know that didn't didn't they like pay for um like the uh they put up money for like. Uh, for, yeah. to finish Step by Temptation, I believe. That's it. it. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. They put money to finish it. When, yeah, don't know if they had any creative control, but they, but Michael Hertz and Lee Kaufman directly paid for it to be finished so they could release it. That yeah. in some ways, Death by Temptation, you can make a solid argument is as much of a trauma movie as Mother's Day is. Right. As a part of like an actual trauma studio film. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, because like then you, you even have stuff like like Father's Day, which you know kind of um, you know kind of dances on the line. Of, like I mean, you even have like Lloyd Kaufman in Father's Day. And, you know? Yeah, go go listen to our Father's Day episode. It's probably like the most interesting episode we've done so far of of the behind the scenes work at Troma Studios and everything going wrong at Troma. Sure. Yeah. It's a, it's one of our juicier ones, I guess. Yeah, everyone loves a good juicy episode, and that's juicy. Yeah. <laughs> um, not a whole lot juicy about Girls School Screamers, though. It is. I I think it's a fun film. Uh, I I know you don't, but that's. that's I'm trying it. to think if I had any other um that there was like little fun things that I uh, came across about the movie itself. I think I. Rem- like yeah, even looking up, like just finding out little things about this movie. It's like yeah, it was filmed. We we're filmed yeah. since we made a movie. Show my man's put more gore in it. Mhm, mhm. And that's kind of the story of Girls School Screamers. Yes, yes. Uh, so I know some people who worked on this movie worked on Blades. Yes, a lot of people that worked on yeah. this also worked on Blades. If you go to IMDb, for a lot of people in this movie, they only have one credit, which is Girl Sco- Girls School Screamers. God, I hate that title. Yeah. Or they have two credits, with the other one being Blades. That is yeah. a lot of people on IMDb. Except for one notable. Okay. That's on the sound, sound department, there was a sound editor credit for... Henry, I'm sorry, Harry E. Snodgrass. And I'm like, I definitely like, heard that name. Yeah, that was, I was like, that's what well. I was like. I've heard of this part. Like, Snodgrass is a like a name that you're going to notice if you like see it. Yeah. And I'm like, I've heard of this person. I think I clicked on their IMDb. They have 137 credits in sound departments. It's actually more than that because they have 137 different projects with some of those being multiple episodes of a TV series. Um, oh, shit. Their very first sound credit, very first credit ever, probably when they were in film school, was Girls School Screamers. Mm. Their second sound credit, this is pretty cool, is The Simpsons from one of their shorts – from the Tracy Allman show. Oh fuck yeah, dude. Yes, yeah. So that's the key start. He then later went on to work on the sound departments for Predator Two, Alien Three, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Groundhog Day, um, uh, Deep Red. Oh, not the, not our Deep Red, not the Argento. Not our not our Deep Red. <laughs> yeah. uh, the video game of Alien versus Predator from '94, kick-ass oh, game yeah. back in the yeah. day. Oh man, that was a great game. A sound design from Mallrats. Um, what? He, he, he this just keeps going and keeps getting bigger. Oh, he uh, supervising the sound editor for Napoleon Dynamite. Um, there you go. Like I'm just uh, what's what's his name? Snodgrass. Harry Snodgrass. Harry Snodgrass. And in okay. fact, he's won two Emmys and has been nomin- nominated four times. Wow. 
This guy's right, super well. like accomplished in sound. I don't know where I ever would have first taken notice of his name, but I somehow dig as I was going through IMDb and I'm like, I know that name somehow. And I clicked on it and I was like, oh shit, he's worked on a ton of things. Yeah. That is yeah. I mean, yeah, you never know. You never know where you're gonna get your start. Girls school <laughs> screamers. Somebody needs to ask him about this movie. Yeah, definitely. Like, Mr. Snodgrass, can you please say the name of your first movie five times? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I was about to say, like, oh, he doesn't look like he's done much lately. Um, his he, his last credit was for 2021, but before that, it was 2018. And then 2018, he has a shit ton, and every year is a shit ton before that. And then I looked it up. Oh, he was born in 1963. He's probably retired. Yeah. Yeah. He probably can live comfortably off those. Res, um, oh, the Preacher royalties. TV series. Yeah. He did 11 episodes of Sound Effects Editor. Interesting that it says uncredited. So, what probably that means is there's probably something wrong with who they did hire to get Sound Effects be the oh, editor and yeah. they're probably like we need you to come fix this yeah. bring me that guy who did the sound on that movie whose name i hate yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah that was like the most interesting thing i could find of like who worked on this movie yeah. uh i did though i did find man it's amazing how many of these we find in the course of the show i did find a review from the new york times yeah, let's hear May it. May twenty third, nineteen eighty six. Which, which oh, oh that was, this was at the theatrical the, opening. The premiere. Holy this shit! This is the premiere. The New York yeah. Times reviewed the premiere. Nice. Wow. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Buckle in. Mm-hmm. Girls' School Screamers, which opens today at the Times yep. Square Theater, is one of those all fall down murder movies made for summer when school is out and the kids are looking for something to do. Why should they swim in sun? The feeling is when they could be watching a bunch of kids their own age die horrible, blood curdling deaths. I mean, that's a great question. Um, right. Seven young women in a Roman Catholic college. Oh, that's all the girls were. I kept saying high school. They were college. Yeah. yeah. Um, accompanied by a slightly paisled old teacher named Sister Urban, go to a haunted mansion to take inventory of the artwork that has been left to the school by the millionaire Tyler Wells. So the artwork's being left, but the house is being. Okay. And that's when I got an inventory to get it all out. Right, okay. right. No, that's really important in the course of the movie ever. No, this is my – this is not the reviewer. This is my language. And Jeff the is whole, editorializing. The, the whole inventory thing never really matters in any way whatsoever. I keep getting yeah, hung up just, on – It just gives them a reason to get in the house. Yeah. Okay, so back to the review. Six of the girls are killed, each in a different grotesque way, or maybe five of them die. It's hard to tell because one of them seems to keep going back to life. But it's that kind <laughs> of movie – where ghosts come back for the sheer joy of killing each other again. Although you might think a ghost could find a less bloody way to die, having been through it once and being short of vital fluids. The acting is uniformly amateurish. Vera Gallagher, who plays Sister Urban, speaks as if there was a typing error in her script and all of her lines were italicized. (laughs) The script is inane, yet not exaggerated enough to be a spoof, but the film has plenty of dark corridors, eerie music and blind corners around which murder lurks and on a hot summer night when no one pays too much attention anyway it may provoke some screams yeah that's i think that's much, actually a really fair review um yeah i think you, I, I really think like from that you're, you're gonna get it if you're gonna like if you're gonna like it or not from that review gosh i i'm telling you man that's these, a good review yeah that's a like good, fair review most of the reviews that we've got, like, and read on here. All been, like, of the 80s Grindhouse reviews we've read have all been very solid, very fair reviews. It's yeah. not until we get into, like, the 90s and the 2000s that the writers start shitting start on. Start to not get it, yeah. Yeah. Though they keep always giving good reviews to, like, Kaufman movies. Until... Um, uh, Newcomb High, or Return to Newcomb High Part 2. Oh, was that a bad one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they, okay. they, 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 yeah, they accused it of being heteronormative. Even oh, the, that's main, right. Even that's though the right. main characters are two women in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the movie is very much the male gaze, but it's like, come on, if you're if you're complaining about that with the trauma movie, you have no business reviewing the trauma movie. Yeah, that's pretty fair. <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, yeah. It's a, but no, that's a great. In the eighties, we keep seeing these eighties reviews in the New York Times. New York Times was fucking hip to the grindhouse scene. Like they, they knew were, what they was were. up, and they got what the what was being done, and what these filmmakers were going for, and why these people, why people were going to see these movies. Yeah, like because even you could tell, like even if like even though like you can like tell that this reviewer might not have actually like liked this movie. Um, it you could tell that they reviewed it in a way that would um, that would make it appealing to some would like a movie like this. When I used to write reviews, I, I've I've written shit tons of reviews. I've actually gotten paid money for writing reviews at times. Yeah. Um, I've, I've gotten paid free movie tickets for reviews, but never uh, never cold hard cash. <laughs> I always I I manage to get cash at times. Um, I always went for the thing of right and i reviewed i've reviewed books and movies i i did both right um i always tried to do my best to write a review that make to make the book sound good for its target audience if it succeeded for that right. audience and it's actually the same method that like um roger ebert would approach reviewing from like how mm-hmm. successful is this work for its targeted audience not how much i like it but h- how much is a, a successful work of art and what it's trying to be and that's always right. how i approach reviews and under that logic like you give shockingly few actual bad reviews yeah, and when you give a Great. bad review, there's no way around it. You're gonna tear it to fucking pieces because it's like it's it's a failure yeah. at what it's trying to be. This movie, I would like under that logic, my review would probably look a lot like this New York Times review. Yeah, I could see like that. it's a name. It doesn't go far enough, but like if you want to watch a bunch of college chicks wander around a spooky old house, yeah, it delivers. It looks pretty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did see this this review. I uh, did give a positive, brief mention of its music, eerie music. I also oh, saw yeah. you mention on Twitter, Lucas, about how you like the music from this movie, specifically and, the end credits. And when I was researching this movie, but not really researching, I was just seeing what other people were saying about this movie online. Um, a lot, a, a positive aspect that a lot of people pointed to was the soundtrack. Yeah, I um. I actually like sent um, my friend the uh, like on on YouTube. There's a version of or, or there's a there's a there's you know that it plays the um the the credit the the music that plays in the end credits and and I sent I sent it to my musician friend because I was just like I think you'd like this you know and he's just like dude that was amazing I, what did, I haven't even heard of this movie I was like the movie's okay this music though is really really good <laughs> so the music was done by um john hodian hodian h-o-d-i-a-n um he has a few film credits nothing major he did do the blades he did do the soundtrack for blades so he is probably a friend from the whole um philadelphia movie making scene and he also, though, is apparently a classically trained composer. So that's why his shit sounds so good. That makes sense. I mean, you could tell, like, especially in those, the music that plays over the end credits, it is just like, yeah, you you would tell that it's like some classic, classical shit. Man, um, I gotta be honest, the, um, the music didn't hit me the same way it hit you and like yeah. a bunch of other people, apparently. Yeah, I just got like, eh, whatever. <laughs> totally fine. But totally I, I did, fine. I did keep seeing that coming up. Um, and oh, the one other thing I have for this movie is it feels like it's been a while. Oh we shit! Had movies that there have been, is that a were in uh, it. 
And uh, I think we also forgot for a movie or two, the consult. Might have. Um, might all have. I need to know about filmmaking, I learned from the Toxic Avenger by Lloyd Kaufman and James Gunn. But there is an entry for Girl School, Girls School Screamers. Ah, a title. <laughs> okay. A group of sexy sorority girls get away in a remote, luxurious mansion turns into a hell weekend as the house unleashes horrors. This one was executive produced by Kaufman and Hertz, so you know it has some graphic gore. Not only that, but can, but can a film with scantily clad sorority sisters really be bad? Possibly. That's the write-up for it. Oh, uh, so, he, so he said possibly. In yes, the yes, that's in the gosh. write-up. That's in the write-up. So <laughs> um, I think that shows a little bit of what their opinion was of this movie and how it turned out. And I did like the um, little nod there of it was produced by Kaufman and Hertz, so you know it has some gore in it. Right, that's, right. That's literally yeah, that's what, they, what added they added to the movie. And yet, and yet, uh, everybody worked together again on Blades. Yes. So it obviously wasn't like a negative thing or like that they, they felt like really forced into it. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah, go so figure. That is kind of. Do you have That's, any final thoughts on girls' school screamers? Not really, man. I mean, like I said, there's not a whole lot to this movie, but it's. I mean, it's fun. I I had fun with it. Um, you okay, know. here here comes the hard thing. Here comes. Do you recommend this, Lucas? I recommend it. Um, I would recommend putting it on on a at a Halloween party, so you're not really watching it, but like. It's there and you have some like weird imagery on on your TV while you're like drinking beer and playing weird music. I, 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 I do not recommend it. Not even in that circumstance. Like there's so much better things you could pick. Sure. I, yeah, th- this just falls in the very like. It's it's not bad enough to be offensive to me, like Sizzle Beach, USA <laughs> or Under the Knife. Um, and it's also not like it doesn't succeed in anything that can be like, oh, this was a flawed but interesting. I see what they were really trying to do here. Like we mentioned before, Death by Temptation or um, uh, Suicide. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I just I just don't think this is a remarkable movie. Didn't do it for you. No. That's totally fair. Totally fair. Um so with that said, what what do we have on the agenda for next week? Because I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, man. The, next week is actually going to be an episode that we weirdly had pseudo in the works from the very beginning of us doing the show. Um, yeah. And there was various ways that we were going to try to incorporate this in. And now we're actually doing it. We figured out how we're incorporating it in that next week is our kind of like free discussion episode. We kind of pick a topic on that. We're generally going to be looking over. And this time we're going to be examining the works and history of a specific filmmaker. And this is one that's going to be very, very divisive for everyone listening. We are going to be going over the work of Eli Roth. Yeah. And, and, and the already reason right we'll, now listening, you're like, oh, this is going to be really interesting. Or you're like, oh, come on. Really? You guys are doing Eli Roth. Yeah, we're doing Eli Roth. Yeah. Um, look, uh, it, the 20th anniversary of the release of Cabin Fever is coming up. So um, that that was kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to do it. I think I think he's somebody who's who's I worth doing uh, 20 Fever. years of episode uh you know i saw cabin fever in the theaters right when it came out so that was probably t- see about 20 years ago see i didn't i didn't see it oh, until I did. it came out on dvd um it, it wasn't playing anywhere by me like uh or either that or i just missed it somehow but like i th- yeah, think i you i think you probably just missed it because it did have wide just distribution and i just okay. don't think a lot of people really um, Cabin Fever didn't hit the same way Hostel did in the pop culture. Right, right. Because I even remember being yeah. excited for uh, 
Apostle coming out and being like, oh, it's that new movie from the guy that did Cabin Fever. I really enjoyed Cabin Fever. Let's see Hostel and Hostel being like, holy shit, which we're going to get into next week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we right. do got something to plug here. Lucas, what do we have to plug this week? We do, we do. Um, so I started a Facebook group for um, listeners of this show. Um just uh, I think it might be an easier way for people to keep up with us because um, I know Facebook can be weird if you put yeah, links and posts. So many posts. And... Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I started a group. It's uh, it's real simple. It's just called if you if you do a search for groups on Facebook and type in make your own damn podcast, uh, you will find our group or you could friend one of us and uh, and and we will invite you to the group if you want. Um and uh, yeah, now we can hang out. You can post memes of weird trauma shit, and I don't know, it'd be fun. So the, the group is still in its infancy, having just opened at the time of this recording. But I do you find it funny that as of right now, it seems to just be a Lucas Mangum fan club group that yeah. everyone's like, "I love you, Lucas. You're great, Lucas." And I'm like, "I'm also on the show." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff talks way more on this show yeah. than I do. <laughs> I hope they're not confusing our voices. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> all, all right. But yeah, yeah. Uh, join our Facebook group. Um, here's hoping it doesn't end up sucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll make it We'll make it fun. We'll all make right. Fun. Next week, Eli Roth. I, I am super psyched for it. I, I, I'm very excited to talk about Eli Roth. 